Oscar. <sighs> oh, now it's cram time after. It's cram four, time. 46 hours of cramming. After 46 hours of cramming. <laughs> it's 5 a.m. 24 hours from now, we'll be thinking, we only have 12 more hours left. We better hurry. So here's the deal, 5 p.m. all the cars have to go on the trailer. This car is, I totally forgot to intro the episode. I've slept two hours in the last 30-ish. I should stand for this. Hello, welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, it is the last few hours that we got to finish up our mid-engine Mustang Fastback build that is gonna be presented in the Holly Motors booth at SEMA 2022 in just a few days. But it has to go on the truck in just a few hours so it can get shipped there. Next time, we should just build the car in, in the convention center and then we don't have to ship it. We'll have more time. If you're just joining us on this build, this car used to be a Bugatti. It was a Bugatti movie car in the movie Need for Speed. It got crashed by the police, and I love me some crashed cars, so I bought it. We brought it down here, took all the Bugatti-ness off of it, got a Mustang body on there, and got it all roll caged out and safe to race, took it racing, had a great time, and then we saw this design online by Karan and DV, and we thought, we should build this. Karan thought we should too. So then we started with a lot of tape and fiberglass and a little bit of good luck, I guess. We got the body roughed out. After that, we spent about two weeks sanding, got the car wrapped this amazing pearl white color that you see here and got one of the sexiest set of wheels ever to be seen on a car on there. And that leaves us where we are today. We have a ton of miscellaneous stuff that needs to be done to wrap this thing up, but we also have some heavy hitting features. The engine bay needs to be completely transformed. We have a dual nitrous tank, direct port nitrous injection system that's gotta be installed, Holly EFI, new intake manifold for the engine. So this thing's gotta have a brand new computer running the whole thing. We gotta get it running and driving in the next 35 hours. Let's get started. Getting started here, Kyle's got the interior carpeting in and running the five point harnesses through the carpeting. And we noticed that the front bumper and front grill area had a little bit too much light colored paint needed to be blacked out. So Kyle did a very thorough job to mask off the whole front of the car to black that out and is moving on to accessories. We got things like the windshield wipers, very important thing to have on the car. And those actually work as well as window felts that help guide our window up and down and our side mirror. While Kyle was doing that, Oscar's working on installing our Holly Dominator EFI. So this car came with a stock GM ECU, which is great, but for the mods that we have planned for it, that will not cut it. We need something that we can easily modify and control our nitrous system with. So Oscar is installing a full Dominator EFI system. And the game plan here is to leave the engine exactly the way it was when it was last running, install the EFI system before we install any intake manifold or nitrous bits, and make sure that we can fire the engine and get it to start with the new EFI system. Um. What are we missing? Did you plug in your injectors? All right, back behind the camera. Oscar just got this thing to fire up for the first time on the Holly Dominator EFI. That was exciting. That was a little scary at the beginning when it didn't work. <laughs> was that cam sensor? Yeah, it was a cam sensor. Was Cam sensor was loose. When my car didn't start, it was a blown fuse. But we're getting pretty good at the why I don't have spark, um, you know, the list of, of why why you might not have spark. So now that we got the Holly EFI, it's tucked under there, right there. Um, that's running, so now we're running that to our Holly Pro Dash. Kyle's working on that on the interior side of the world. He's got the GPS unit in there and getting everything plumbed so we can have our big, beautiful dash. Another thing we worked on in the background is checking out our headlights. So the rendering, the original design, yellow, and then the headlights that I kind of picked out, black. 
I honestly cannot make up my mind. I let the guys kind of decide they like yellow. So we're going to go with yellow, but I'm also bringing black to the show and I might swap them out midway through SEMA so picture, people can get pictures of both. I don't know. So we're hoping with any luck to get the interior finished out pretty quickly, but we got to do some serious modifications to our shifter because we have a lack of parts, which I'll get into in a little bit. And uh, what Oscar's working on right now is cleaning out the engine bay because we got to swap out the um, intake manifold to go to our nitrous intake manifold, the direct pour nitrous intake manifold. But uh, Oscar just brought up a good point. He should start working on the shifter. So let's jump into that. So this is the old shifter that came with the car. It is rough, rough AF. And this is my preferred shifter. Anytime you have a Porsche transaxle in your car, it's the numeric shifter. Check them out online. There's a link in the description. Um, they sent us this bad boy out. Now you got your cables. We have Porsche cables here that run to the trans. They have different cable ends. The proper thing to do would be to order the right cable end on the internet and wait. But SEMA is literally tomorrow, so we're gonna weld some things to some things and make it work. And we got a little surprise. Look at that package. We got the numeric shifter with our hydro e-brake there, and we got a decorative shift knob. Just, you know, if you know, you know. It also has a button for nitrous. It's wonderful. Kyle's gonna keep working on the interior, getting a little bit more carpeting in there where we want it, getting our smart wire race pack dialed in, and just kind of tidying up some of the wires down there. And Oscar, Oscar's gonna do something really cool that we haven't done yet. He's going to set up the intake manifold for the direct port nitrous injection. A lot of lines gotta be run to a lot of solenoids. It's a super cool setup. Since we are playing the deadline game, I'll keep you guys included on it. It is midnight right now. Actually, it's 11.30 to be fair. We have till 5 p.m. tomorrow morning to be done. Look at this beast of an intake manifold. Holly high rise intake manifold with direct port nitrous injection. I love it. So these are the solenoids. We've gone over this a million times. Nitrous, fuel, Oscar's got two more fuel lines to make and then we're jumping into the engine bay to get this thing installed. Basically we wanted the engine bay to just be like a, a glorious picture of, of nitrous and, and LS engine. But first things first, engine side of the world. We've got to get this intake manifold off to make room for the new intake manifold to come on. That's gonna be fuel rails as well. And then we're gonna take the coil brackets off so we can relocate them and have nice, pretty exposed valve covers.
update time. How you feeling, Oscar? Sleepy. Sleepy. Yeah. This is day, I think, four of us working through the night. Every night for four four nights in a, in a row. It's it's quite a lot. We are, we, you know, like it or not, this thing's going to SEMA very soon. So it's 7 a.m. right now, 5 p.m. The car has to go on. Uh, progress is slowed a little bit as it would because um, we're all exhausted. Uh, work in the back is going well, though. We have... Um, Brackets have been made for the coils. Space for the new intake manifold is being made. We are getting close. And you can see Oscar has jumped into fabricating the front grille. So we have our headlights chosen. We're with the yellow now. Everybody's sold on yellow. I'm happy about yellow. It's gonna get this grill, uh, and then we're gonna paint it, uh, and then it gets mounted and pretty much done. There's not a lot of other fab work in the front. That's it. So we're just trying to knock different things off. Interior, done. Um, grill going in that'll knock out the front and then we can just focus on the engine bay area This is that last big push the excitement of all of this gets us through but we are Very very like ridiculously short on sleep. You're talking like maybe three four hours over the last 70 hours um, But it's gonna happen. Also, we can build at SEMA if there's anything we can bring with us to, to accomplish at SEMA We can do that as well, but we're gonna try and get it all all banged out here Would you like fries with that nitrous? Look at that. It's like a it's like a big high-rise supercharger, except we have nitrous. Looking good. So we've got the direct port nitrous injection. Uh, we did new valve covers, Holly high ram intake, new throttle body, relocated coil packs, the whole shebang. What's next, guys? We're doing uh doing some some nitrous bottling. First we gotta make sure there's no fuel leak. Oh, right, right. That's why we turned the camera on. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're a little sleepy. All right, so let's pressurize the system and make sure that no fuel is leaking from our newly plumbed nitrous system. I don't smell gas. We got zero leaks. Let's start it or just... Um, let's, let's think about this. Yeah, let's start it. Interesting. Yeah, out of the top five things that you don't want to have happen six hours before you leave for SEMA, I'd say becoming non-operational is, uh, don't, don't worry about it, we'll fix it. Why over-dramatize it? If you guys have watched the show enough, you know how we troubleshoot these no-start issues. Air, fuel, spark, lube. We know we have oil. Air, we already talked about, that could be an issue. Fuel, we could test a lot of different ways and we shall, and spark is uh, what Oscar thinks is sus. So we shall troubleshoot. Oh my God, what happened to my face? I can't talk on camera like this, I gotta go clean up. I scrubbed really hard, but some of it just won't come off. We only have hands open in the bathroom. All right, so guys, it is 2.30 uh, p.m. Cars have to leave by five. Driver is already on his way. Diagnosed this for a couple hours, found out that our crank sensor went bad. It just died on us. Kyle is driving around trying to find a new one. We are, we know for sure though, our crank sensor is bad. So 
We're very confident in the fix and we're moving on. It's time to mount our nitrous bottles. We've got a hell of a plan to mount these things. It's gonna look incredible. Oscar's on top of it. We're gonna do nitrous bottles or carbon overlays first. Okay, scratch that actually. We're gonna do some carbon fiber overlays. This, this uh, you know, needs to be tidied up, tidied up. We're gonna tidy it up with some nice carbon fiber. We've got a plan and two and a half hours to execute it. And another build, freshly painted as you can see. There's a big empty spot where my build was. It's already on the trailer because, uh, well, it got done first, but it also looks like crap. So I have a lot of work to do when it gets to Vegas. The tiredness is definitely setting in. We're all very fatigued. We are, our driver Steve has been kind enough to hang out for so far three extra hours and it'll probably be at least four. Um, he has to take off tonight to hit the show on time. So we really got to wrap this up. Um, we're also packing up because we are bringing four cars to show and five cars to Vegas So there's a lot of stuff to bring So we're just packing Getting cars on transport getting this carbon laid down so we can get some nice nitrous bottles in there I don't want to interrupt the guys. So I'm kind of over here in a corner hiding out It's nine o'clock already. We've got almost every other car loaded up the Guys are working on the engine base still, but the huge thing that I'm worried about We still haven't got the car to start or run be really embarrassing to have such a good looking car at SEMA and be pushing it. So I changed the plans guys, we had to call an audible. If we got it all done here in the shop, would it really be SEMA crunch time? Would it really be what, I don't know. I can't do this motivation, <laughs> it's too, too late. All right, so here's the deal. There's a lot of work that needs to be done and we're, we're out of time. So we're gonna have to do it at SEMA. The car loads in on a Sunday. The show starts on a Tuesday, which gives us part of Sunday and all of Monday to continue working. The only risky part of that is if we don't bring a tool that we need or say we needed to weld something or do something that we're not allowed to do inside the conference center, then we don't get to finish. But hopefully that won't happen. So we packed everything we can. Now we're switching gears. Gonna replace the crank sensor and hopefully that will solve the problem here. All right, Oscar, the version of Oscar that's been working for 50 or 70 hours straight, watched there. every Marvel movie in order. <laughs> he says that the crank sensor was the problem and we swapped it out and got a new one and that it's gonna work and he's very confident about it. He said, he's just like, he was gonna take it off the jacks and we were gonna go, but okay. Oscar, let's make this thing work. If not, we're pushing it to SEMA and that's embarrassing. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's gonna work. Why does it hurt my soul? Ah, uh, let's check the, um, let's check the screen. We checked a lot of wires. Uh, they all had continuity. We found one weird thing with a grounding point that shouldn't cause a problem, but might. We really got a lot of hope resting on it. It was causing a problem. Fire me up, Oscar. Let's just get this thing to start right away. I'm gonna look at the screen right here and it's gonna say RPM. This is sad. It's like the last thing you want after such an insane marathon work session. Our driver Steve is being very, very kind to still hang out. I'm sure it's, yeah, it's 10.30. Um, we're gonna give it one more try. We have another wiring harness, just a completely new harness for this entire thing. We just replaced the sensor. Our diagnostics tell us we have no crank signal. So if we got a brand new crank sensor, it should work. Let's just go ahead and replace the wiring harness. See if it helps. The thought is not that the harness was faulty, it's that we could have pinched or chopped the wire when uh, swapping out the intake manifolds.
All right guys, harness is swapped. Did it twice, because first we swapped to the wrong harness. This is our last shot. One way or another after this, it's going on the truck. Running or not, we may push it. All right, buddy, let's make this thing fire. Well, that's clearly not the end result that we were hoping for. We've never pushed our car onto transport to go to SEMA or pushed a car into SEMA, but there's a first for everything. We've got two days. The car loads in on a Sunday. We have Sunday night and we have Monday day before the show starts Tuesday to get this thing fixed and fired up and finished before it's presented to the public. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when that episode drops. It will be out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace! Come on.